Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. If you get a chance, check out the website. Lots of the see and do there. Plus, also, there's a member's ride section, which is awesome. I want to thank everybody for sending in their photographs of their cars. And remember, it can even be a project. It doesn't have to be finished to be part of that section. Also, in the description below, there's a donation tab. I greatly appreciate those of you who have set in donations, and I appreciate all of you for being here. There's t-shirts, stickers, a little bit of everything on the website. Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and disassemble the door and do the proper maintenance on the window regulator. And why I say proper is a lot of people just spray PB Blast or something, whatever lubricant they like in their tracking and expect it to just fix it completely. It may, but it's only temporary and then it gets stiff again. So we're going to do it the proper way so you don't have to worry about it again. So I'm going to get the door set up on the horses and we'll go ahead and get started. Your door obviously will be on the car, okay? But mine's off of the car already, so not a big deal. It's probably an advantage for me so I can go ahead and get the proper filming. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove the door panel. I didn't remove it yet because I didn't know if anyone wanted to see it. Try to remember, there's some folks that have not even removed the door panel before, so this is kind of educational for them too. Not that I'm much of a teacher. I do apologize in advance. If, if this film's a little bit long, I'm going to try to edit it down as short as I can, but I don't want to miss anything. So, okay, let's do it the right way. All righty, let's get the door panel removed first. And remember, you can do this on the car. Don't go removing your door. It's just this is off the car, and it gives me really nice camera angles. First, pull your lever back. Everything's going to need oiled up in this. You can see there's a little indention here. Here's a picture of it. Just take a screwdriver and pop it up. Comes right out. Let's take our Phillips screwdriver and take the screw out. A nice thing too to do, and I won't bore you with this because that'll be another video, is okay take that out like that i'm getting ahead of myself wow these are nice heavy metal is to put sound deadener in your door but that's for another time actually probably not far off because i have to do that <laughs> probably should paint this door and get it done while it's apart i take this rubber and pull it back like that it'll swing right out of the way and get the word swing out. There's a Phillips screw here. Take that. Now don't lose any of your screws. I know I say that a lot, but always watch what you're doing with everything. Now make sure if yours are in half decent condition to hold on to these. They're very heavy metal. They're not like plastic ones that you buy now. So you can take some quad O steel wool and a little bit of polish and clean these up really nice, the same as your door handles. The aftermarket stuff's never like the original. Now what I have here is plastic uh, pry tools. auto trim remover to removal tool set. Uh, I think I got them from Amazon, but I was doing stereo work for a little while in newer cars, and you gotta really be careful with people's cars and your own. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and run this underneath here and start breaking it loose. Okay, there's no screws inside this handle, so you'll be able to go ahead and pull it up. You'll see what I mean. The reason you wanna do this is if you start sticking a screwdriver in here, and your paint is nice, you're gonna have some issues. So, I had to pull up on that a little with a putty knife. I didn't know the button was off. Just move along slowly. Never rush stuff like this, okay? And you'll fill the little pins. I'll show you what everything looks like when I get it apart. One thing I may do, since I'm doing that 60s fill, 
is back in the day that uh, I call it diamond tuck, you know, upholstered look. I really wanted to do that to my door panels. I did it, I did it for somebody else once and it come out really nice, but I don't know. Let me know what you all think. I can even do videos on that, but I kind of like it. But then at the same time, I don't want to ruin my 68, so I don't know. Whatever you think, I like it. I think it's a unique look. Brings it back to that 60s, 70s feel, you know. Just take your time. Don't rush. That's the worst thing you can do. What well, these are, these been on here a long time. There we go. All right. These are tight. I don't think they ever been off. Okay. I'll show you what's going on here in a minute, but you got to slide it up if the door was sitting on the car. Just like that. And here's why. See the handle there? Or I should say bracket. Oh, it's loose. Hmm. There. It slides onto this. Okay. Okay, this definitely has never ever been opened up. This is like a treasure. Here's 264. I don't know what that number is for, but that was from the assembly line. This car is amazing. It really is. I, I just can't be excited enough about it, to be honest with you. It's a survivor. Here's your spring. Always remember to put that back in. Okay, that goes behind your window winder. Mine happens to have the original plastic on it. I'm like amazed with this. I, wow, wow. Okay, I promised I'd show you something, I'm sorry. Here are the clips. Now you can buy them. They still sell them if some of these tear or break, you know. Here's the clips and here's the little witch's hats. which I call them, and these clips slide right into there, okay? Look at that. Even the writing on here still from the factory. This car is scary original. Okay, I'm going to try to get this plastic off without tearing it all up, so just gently, okay? And I'll get it back on here the same way. I'll just use, uh, probably after I go ahead, I'm just going to talk while I'm removing this. Just be gentle. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and do the sound deadener. And then I'm going to spray a little bit, a tiny bit of adhesive around here, not on this, to put this plastic back on. So, very easy. There we go. So, now, if you do tear yours, it's not the end of the world. You can go ahead and make up a piece of plastic and put it on here. It's just, this is kind of original, and it's cut nice, you know. So, let me get this out of the way here. And we have foam. <laughs> I guess that's all kind of... Brittle, like I said, this car has not been apart, so it's a true survivor, obviously. Let me get my vacuum and get this cleaned up. Give me one second. You want to get all this debris out of here. You don't want it getting down inside of everything, so I'll mute the film a second. Okay, if you've gotten this far, that means you have nothing better to do. Okay, we're going to go ahead first, and I'm going to loosen this all up and slide the glass down. So we're going to remove. They're 10 millimeter bolt heads. I guess that would be M6, I think by 1.0. Don't quote me on that.
Always wear gloves if possible, by the way, because then you're going to be dealing with oil and different things that we're using in here. You know what I mean? So she looks really clean inside. Now don't get in here on a small bolts with uh, an air ratchet or anything silly. Okay. And remember too. All right. I'll show you. These two bolts are different from this bolt. And I really can't show you on camera. It's hard, but it's a different height. This bolt is shorter. So don't start mixing the bolts up everywhere. <clears throat> if you do, it's probably not the end of the world, but it's best not to. Okay, that is loose. See how the window starts moving? Okay, so I want to loosen up some more. So we have a 10 millimeter here. I'm setting these in a specific order on my workbench that you can't see right now. So I can put them back how they came out. Okay. This one I'm going to remove now. I'll show you what it does in a little bit. I'll explain it. That isn't actually the regulator. Okay, so I gotta put that on a bench where I know where that is. Two by the window winder. Remember, I try to stay out of your way the best that I possibly can. Sometimes it's difficult, but I always show you what's going on if I get in your way for a second, I go back. Don't lose your little washers. Make sure you put them back on. Okay, we don't need to remove this. That's going to the door latch. I'm going to be doing that in another video because I'm going to show you how to take this all apart, clean it, the latch mechanism, and uh, get it all cleaned up. Maybe we'll do the next video on that. Doesn't sound like a bad idea, huh? Okay, so that's all loosened up. I was looking at something. Usually they don't have those little original rubbers on them. This thing is almost too original. I'm pretty impressed. Okay, so you're going to bend this up a little bit. Don't go crazy though, okay? We got to get the glass out. Hold up on this. It's moving on the horse. So it's making it a little difficult. Don't scratch your glass and then let that back down. Okay. This is a really good time to check everything on here. Although mine's in good condition. This is a great time to clean this really well. And if you're doing any type of window tinting, which I will be, it's a great time if you're doing it yourself for these to lay flat on your workbench while you're tinting instead of trying to do it in a vertical position. So let me get this out of the way. Now what we are going to do next, okay, the bar from your vent wing comes down into the channel. All right, this bolt that I'd already moved, I said I explained it in a minute, holds this in place, okay? But there's also a screw I'm gonna show you. We need to tilt this back out of the way because the window regulator is up around it. So yeah, you could tug and pull on the door, but you don't want to end up bending, bending the inner side of the door. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt this back out of the way. And let me say something here. If you choose not to remove this and you start bending this out of the way, these holes might not line up again. So let's do this next. I'm going to use here, let me zoom the camera in. Is that close enough? I'm going to take and just gently pry that, okay? I'll get my pry tool in there. And we're going to pull, I'll show you the clips inside that you just heard one come out of. So you know what they look like, okay? That clip actually came out, which is fine, because that'll give me a chance to show you something else. Here's the vent wing. 
and after I had removed the felt, you have a Phillips screw up inside of there. You do have to remove that. There is the clips that it came out of, and here's one that pulled out of the door frame. Okay, not a big deal. I'll show you that when we're putting it back together. Take your Phillips screwdriver, get up inside of there. Mm, wow. I gotta get a bigger one. I don't wanna strip it out. Wow, that is in there. Mm. Ah, wow. Let's hit it with some PB. Never had one of them that tight before. Oddly enough, only on film. Let me try something. Some things I shouldn't do on film, but I do. Don't go breaking your glass. Sometimes a little love tap helps. And sometimes it don't. Mm. Wow, why are you not coming loose? <clears throat> okay, try another screwdriver. I don't want to round it up. Might be in your way a second, I'm not sure. <clears throat> There we go. Woo! I never had to fight with one of those. That was odd. That's the first one in 40 years that I ever had to fight with. Sorry if I'm putting my head in your way. I don't want to strip it or have anything go wrong. Ooh. It's just a regular Phillips machine screw. I just never had one that tight. In the factory, though, they probably ran it in with something. So let's see here. I got to pull this back, which I just did that a little hard. It was stuck. Of course, been in there since 1968 so you know it's gonna happen okay we got to get this pulled back out of the way alrighty so that should have cleared it right there unless you want to remove this and refurbish all this that's another video I know of course okay so you see that bracket moved away from that hole now we are going to go ahead and get the regulator out of there. There we go. And well, we are not done, sadly. Okay, so let me get reset up here. The right way to do this would be lay it on your workbench. But I have crap everywhere, unfortunately. Usually I'm clean and neat, but today I'm not. Okay, I'm going to lay a blanket across that and we'll go ahead and start working on the regulator refurbish. Now what I'm going to do is put my window winder back on here just to make things a little easy. There we go. Okay, doesn't have to be real tight. Just snug the screw up. See this here? You don't normally see these they're usually missing. Uh, this keeps this from banging off the door and squeaking and making noise as your regulator inside. So if you don't have this on there, shenangle, I don't even know if that's a word, something to put around the end of this, like a little piece of rubber, or you can use, you know, them vacuum caps that you use when you put on carburetors to block the port off. You can actually use one of those because they sell larger ones and put it right on there. How's that for cheap? Okay, so let's flip this over. Okay, and let's make sure you're in camera angle. Also on the regulator, you're going to notice little pieces of foam. 
So make sure that you put something around there if they're missing because it keeps it from rattling on a door. Now, what we are going to do next, you still have your window winder screwed onto there. Leave it on there because you're going to be cranking this. Do you see this here? Here, I'll show you a close-up photo. You have to bend these tangs back. I use that word a lot. I don't know why. But let me show you. Take a pair of needle nose. Okay, now don't break them off. Don't get, don't get crazy on me here. All right? Very gently. I hope you're in camera view. Okay, you are. Just checking. Okay. Just like that. That little bit of accent. Okay. And we're going to take this side and bend this. Oh, a little bit of grunting always helps. There we go. Now, whatever you do, don't bend them too far. Or you'll break them off and then you'll be in trouble. Okay. Now, let me back up the camera. Now, let me bring something up a moment, okay? I know you got to see my face again. Uh, if, in fact, your regulator is broken anywhere, try to go on the Samba Classifieds or a local salvage yard. We know those vanished over the years by now with Volkswagens. Get an original German regulator because the aftermarket ones, I'm not saying they won't work, but they're flimsy, they're crappy, they're thin, they don't fit well, the holes don't line up. I think I made my point. So do what you can to save yours or repair it or go get original German one off of somebody. I am sure there's quite a few out there. So let's get on it. Sorry about that. Hopefully this, you can see what I'm doing here. Now, these tangs, yeah, I know I used that word again, are opened up so we can slide the cable out. Okay. Whoops. Limited on space. Whoops, wrong way. Now, also, this is in a slot. See that? It's in a slot, so we're going to have to clean all of that up. Okay, so we're going to pull this. Just start sliding the cable out. Alrighty, I had to readjust. Whoops. Little clip come off, don't lose that. So we're going to pull this out. Okay, and I'm gonna bring you up close here. This is the right way of doing this. You're gonna be really happy with it when it's done. Now what happens here, okay, we have our cable out and we're gonna clean and make it all pretty. Now, you're tracking here. There's grease inside of them, okay? Although mine don't look like there's hardly anything in there. What happens to grease over the years? That's right, it turns to paste, okay? And it starts making it stiff. So when you spray these cables with some PB Blast or whatever your favorite lubricant is, the paste will still be in there, so to speak, okay? So without taking the cable completely out and cleaning this track properly, it's gonna get stiff again pretty quick, okay? So we're gonna go ahead. I bought these, okay? There's a three-piece set, regular brush, a little steel brush and brass. Obviously, I'll use which one I need to. We'll see how bad they are inside, okay? I say okay a lot, don't I? So let's move this out of the way first. So we have our brushes set up, our regulator, and I just used a couple milk crates with an old bath towel <clears throat> that I got caught taking at one point, but I bought her new ones. So I'm just using some simple uh, brake cleaner. Uh, from the big box store because it's a little cheaper. I'm gonna spray it in the track first, okay? Oh, or maybe just out in the driveway. Okay, it's hard for you to see probably, but it's running right up the track. Give it a little shot easily. Okay, oh, see it spilled out there. Okay, I'm gonna take the brass brush because mine really isn't that bad. So, I'm going to do that. It's running out everywhere. Oh, it is smoothing up as I brush it. OK. 
okay? You want it nice and clean. Just take your time. Never rush a job because that's when you've wasted your time because it's not going to fix it. Oh, yeah, it's shining. It's shining inside. Yeah, I know. I can't sing. Okay. Although I did when I was younger, believe it or not. Okay, I can see little particles and they're all loosened up. Okay. So, I'm going to... I might be at an angle a minute there. Okay, let me blow it off with a blow gun. Watch your eyes. Compressor kicked on. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I thought I unplugged my microphone, is, uh, yeah, I know it won't be a bad thing, huh? <laughs> we're going to go ahead and clean the, I call it the window winder, obviously. So we're going to spray this out real good, clean it up, and then hit it with some PB Blast. But I want to get the old crap out of it. So let's do that. I'll bring you up close. It's not nothing spectacular. And then I'm going to show you what this track looked like inside. It's a big difference. Okay, what I'm going to do, this is a, a cheesy way of doing it. I'm going to spray a little bit of cleaner just around here. Remember, after you clean all this out, you definitely need to re-lubricate it. Okay, but I think you know that. Let's turn it over. Now make sure this is flimsy. I know you can't see it, but I'm going to spray a little in here. Watch this. Don't go in your eyes. Always wear eye protection. Okay. Just give it a little scrub. I like to clean all this up. It just makes sense to do it while it's apart. Can't hurt, that's for sure. Okay, let's go back over to our makeshift workbench. Now, I do want to bring something up, okay? When you are messing around with this, see how flopsy-mopsy it is? You'll end up <laughs> bending the channel. So, I don't know why I laughed at that. Uh, you're going to end up bending the tracking, okay? So, whatever you do, hold it on each end. I know that sounds childish to tell you something like that. But you don't need to end up bending it, and then you're going to have an issue. So let's bring you up close. I'll show you the inside of the track. You can see, well, the best that you can, how clean the track is inside. See that? Ooh, pretty impressed, aren't you? That's how you want it. You want that thing nice and clean inside, okay? And then, of course, you, know, you can wipe that off. I made a mess of it. But the track, go over the whole thing. Make sure there's no pasty stuff in there, especially on the sides, okay? And just take your time and do it right. This is your cable. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, if in fact these little plastic pieces fall off, that is how they go on, because they're going to ride in that track. This one fell off where I said to you, hey, okay, See the slots? Just push them on. If it makes you feel better, you can put a tiny dab of uh, glue here and then slide it on so it stays in. Okay. And then clean it up real good to make sure the slots have all the grease out of them because that's what's going to slide on the track and you'll put fresh grease in, not to paste the old stuff. If you look, come on, look. See, there's like felt in there. It almost reminds me of the same cables that go in the sunroof. All right. Now, obviously, it wouldn't be the same exact cable, but the same product made up. Now, I'm going to spray it lightly and brush it with a soft brush and clean it off first. Make sure you please, please wear gloves. You don't want all this chemical going into your skin. It can cause uh, blood cancer. 
So let's give this a little spray here just to get the heavy stuff off. Okay, this is a very soft bristle. I'm just cleaning it up just to get any heavy pasty grease off. I know I brought it up 50 times already and I'm going to keep doing it. So you may want to turn off the video if you don't want to hear my voice. That's why my wife wears earplugs. Okay, so I'm going to take a rag or a cloth and just give it a little wipe. I'm probably in front of you there. Okay, just want to clean the crap off of it. As you can see now, it's clean may not look it, but it is. It's nice and clean. See that? These are the clips, the plastic clips, okay? Just give them a little spray. Use soft bristle. Do not even use a brass brush. These are plastic, okay? And you wanna get, I'll show you in a minute, there's little particles of poo-poo. Well, not real poo-poo, coming out of there. And you'll see what I mean in a second. All right, so, Hopefully you've cleaned. Come on, focus. There we go. Didn't want to focus. See that? You want them cleaned out really good. Even if you got to use a little toothpick and get in there, clean them. So we've gotten this far, and I am going to bring something up while I'm wiping this off, is these are felt. Now, technically, you just need to use oil. I, I don't know what this goes. I call it felt, but anyhow, you should just use a little oil. I'm going to use Molly grease. It's messy, but it's good. And it's the same stuff that I actually used in my CV joints on the IRS uh, axles. Brain quit. Okay. So that's what I choose. Do your research and use what you want to use. Okay. Uh, PB Blast ain't going to cut it. You need something with a little viscosity, if that makes sense, to uh, stay on it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this around and get everything prepped to slide this back in the tracking. Sorry about the makeshift bench. <laughs> Mine is a mess. Here comes the messy part. Okay, I use this multi-purpose grease. Extreme pressure, obviously this is not extreme pressure. I use this on the IRS joints, so I already have it on hand. I have a couple tubes, so I use this. You can use what you want, just do your research. This actually goes in a gun, but I have extra ones on hand. So I'm going to take that out. I really hate this part. Okay, I'm going to dab a brush in here like that. Sound like Borat. <laughs> like that. Okay. I don't know if I'm blocking you folks. Hopefully not. Okay. And here, let me check the camera. It's really not like rocket science, you know, but I'm trying to get it inside of here. And the best way I found is with a brush. Okay, so you're going to sweep it inside of there. Try to get the brush down in there. Let me do something here a minute. Spin that in there. Boom. I want to try to use a smaller one to get inside of there. Probably be good to put this in the grease gun and pump it through there and then get the most of it out. But I don't like to get carried away uh, and then have a big glob in there that turns to paste overnight. So. Okay, so let me grease this track up and I'll be right back. So I got the tracking all greased up. I am going to take, ah, oh, where'd it go? The PB Blast, I want to spray it inside this window crank. Just a little bit in there. Turn it around so it goes down inside. I can't shoot grease in there, obviously. There we go. I can feel it getting smoother. Come on. There we go. And let me put it in 
this side. This, you know what to do here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just doing this real quick. There we go. Okay. Gonna have to put grease on this cable. Watch what you're using. This is an old bath towel that I got busted taken from the house years ago. So now they're all rags for me. So let's move this up out of the way a moment. It's time to grease this up. I don't like this part. Make sure you have gloves on, okay? And grease it up really good. Let me get my hands wiped off. Alrighty. We'll change towels after we get this started. Let's bring this down. Okay. You're going to start feeding the cable in. Come on. It's got to get around that bend. There we go. You can see it pushing some of the grease out. I am going to take and put some grease on this track. It's probably easier to do with my fingers. Because that is what that plastic's going to slide up and down on the little pieces I showed you. Okay. A little bit on my finger. And I'm going to put... Oh, goody. I dropped it. Ugh. Put a little inside. Ain't going to hurt. And on that one. Okay. You want to slide it on the track. I'll wipe my hands off again. I can't hold anything. A little more. I need it to grab. There we go. And, ooh, yeah. That is smooth as satin sheets. Wow. Nice. Okay. Let's leave that up there a second. Whatever you do, do not forget to put these tangs back over or this will come flying out. Well, not flying out, but you know what I mean. Bend them back over. I think I bent that one too far. There we go. You just want to keep it from the plastic riding out. See that? You just want it bent over to where this clip, when it comes down, has to stop there. Okay? Well, the clip don't hit it, but you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> My brain stopped again. It must be getting older. So you want them bent over so it can't come out of the track. So you made it this far with me. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and reinstall it. So let's take our time and get it together properly. She's moving very, very smooth. Very happy with this. This is great. And this will be good for many years to come. Okay, so let's get it ready to put together. All right, here is the factory sound deadener, which I think is crappy, but that's just me. Uh, I am gonna pull that off and put sound deadener in, but we're not doing that today. I'm just doing a window regulator video, so I don't want to hold everybody up if you needed this video. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in, and then I'll pull it back apart for another video. If you do want to see the sound deadening being put in the door, let me know. I know it isn't a big deal if not, so it's up to you. This felt track, as you see here, is where the glass goes and slides up in. So be careful.
Okay, let's start fighting with it. Oops, wait a minute. Our happy little rubber piece back on. Oops, wrong way, dum dum. There we go. And that'll keep it from vibrating. Uh, we have little pieces of foam that's going to go around here. But remember, I'm not putting some of this stuff back on because I got to pull it right back out to do the sound deadening. I'm going to spray acid down inside of here, clean it up so it don't rust. But let's stay focused. You'll put your little pieces of foam back on her to keep it from rattling. Okay. So now I'll show you something here as usual. Okay. If you see this bar going over here, which obviously you do, this is what I'm talking about with this bar coming down in. It blocks it from getting it in. Okay. So let's slide this up in. Okay. Now one thing you got to watch. Okay. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Wait one second here. Let me get a couple bolts started and then I'm going to show you something else to watch for, of course. Don't tighten them all until you're done. You want to leave them loose so you can shift it around. I hate working with tiny bolts. Okay, oh. up inside of here reach up in. You want the regulator to go up inside of this channel. If not, you're not going to get the window in. So make sure that it stays back up inside here, up against here. You'll know because you won't get your window in. Come on. I'll get the camera up in here when I'm done so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't like this part. I'm always afraid of breaking the glass. There we go. Just kind of let it sit in there loosely. And check one more time. The regulator up in there. These bolt holes are hard to line up sometimes. It's actually hitting the regulator, which can be frustrating, but it's part of the part of the journey. Come on, get in there. It's this mechanism here. I gotta squeeze it in. Come on. There we go. It's normal when you got to fight with them. Let's see if your screw holes lined up. It is. Whew. That's the crappy part of the deal. Okay, let's get that screw put in. Take your Phillips screw. I didn't chew it up, so I'm good to go. Now don't go ham on us and cross thread it. Take your time, get it lined up in the hole. Okay, the screw's in place. I'll show you that in a second. That bar goes down to here and it has a tab in the bottom with threads. So 
we are going to tighten this. Now don't go nuts, seriously. It's tight enough. Okay, now let me bring you in even closer if that's possible. Now, the screw's right there. I know you can see it. It's hard to see right now. And one of our felt strips popped out. I'll fix that in a minute. Now, as you can see, I have to get a little screwdriver. We're going to take this clip off of here. Okay. Come on. I know you've been on there forever. All right. Now you can see on here that little tab that slides up inside of here and I'll put the camera in there in one second. Let me get it in place. So there's your screw. That's on your vent wing. Okay. And these are the clips. They have that little clip that slides into here and you just slide it into place. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Okay, now I'm sure they sell these clips, Wolfsburg West or somebody, but please save your clips if possible. Nothing works as good as original. Okay, so you're going to, let's straighten this a minute. There we go, it bends. You're going to push that back in. Kind of a primitive way of doing it, but do what way you feel is right. Okay, let's get to the glass. So let's attempt to get the glass up in. Make sure you get it in your tracking, okay? This, I don't like this part. This part kind of stinks. Because I'm trying not to, wait, I know what to do. Hey, I almost broke the glass. I set that in there to hold this away for right now. Just while I'm trying to get the glass positioned. There we go. Need to come loose. Okay. I have the door laying on its back. So it's not cooperating as much because it's laying against the outside of the door. You stay in there. I gotta get in front of you just for a second, I'm sorry. There, sorry about that, I had no choice. It was in the cards, okay? So make sure that you are in this track, okay? Now before you hook your winder up, you always make sure it's moving smooth, okay? I gotta clean this all off now before you go forcing it, okay? So, what we're going to do, take our little tool out of there. I gotta line the window up, which sometimes can get a little cranky. Make sure you put it in the right holes. You'll be able to see the imprint of where the washers were, okay? So let's do that next. I'm going to have to hold the window up against it. Little pry tools. I love these plastic pry tools. They're actually really nice. Really nice. I don't know why I'm talking that way. Okay. Probably just getting silly. Okay, so let's start that. I don't like little bolts. I have a heck of a time with them. And it's not just my shaky hands from Tremors. It's they're hard to hold on to. Okay. All right, so we got these started. You want to get this one in here. Just checking. Don't want you complaining later. Okay, so we're gonna tighten this one up. Now remember, these are little. 
for six millimeter or 10 millimeter head, you know what I mean. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, tighten that up. Use quarter inch ratchet so you don't go berserk, although you could still break them with a quarter inch ratchet. So be careful, mind your manners. Okay, now we're going to do what I call being an idiot because I forgot to tighten these up. Okay. There we go. I'm just being gentle on the first ride to make sure nothing binds. A little bit of squeaking. That's because the window scrapers got crap on them. Okay, and look how nice that is. Well, wind it up and down one more time for your enjoyment. Nice and smooth. Very smooth. Not bad for a 68. Now let's go over a couple of things. You can uh, put the rest together yourself. And I'll just do reverse of what I did by putting a door panel on, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, what I can do, and it's up to you folks, I can do the next process while I got the door off of the car, doing removal of the handle, the rod, the linkage to the rod, and the latch mechanism. I can take it all apart, show you how to grease it up and oil it and do everything, although you don't use oil on that. I'm going to show you what you really use. If you want to see that, leave it in the comments, okay? I can do that while the door's apart. Uh, while I got it apart, I'm also going to do the sound deadener. I'm going to spray acid down inside of there, clean prime, and shoot paint down in there so it seals it. Uh, I think that's all I had to tell you. The window scrapers I have to still order. Make sure when you do get window scrapers to save your old clips when you remove your window scrapers because the new ones, they don't fit very well. So make sure you save those. Uh, I just didn't have a chance to order those yet because I'm not at that part. Somebody requested this video, so I hope you, you enjoyed it. Actually, there was quite a few on our Sunday night club meeting chat. Uh, so, okay, that's that in a nutshell. Let's review a few things. So as you see, that is the way to properly do the regulator. I know some of you probably thought I went a little too far, but I didn't. Do I do that? No. That's the proper way. Take the cable out of the tracking and do it the right way. Clean up that tracking like it deserves to be. Regrease it and do it the right way. Uh, okay, so next week I'm going to do a video that's going to be very important because a lot of people are always talking about oil leaks on air cold motors. That was weird. So we're going to throw an engine on a stand that I have here and we're going to discuss oil leaks. Uh, on our air-cooled engines. Then, of course, the following week, we're going to start on the front beam, the suspension, and all that fun stuff. Uh, in the meantime, I'll throw some extra videos in and do the latch mechanism, cleaning it properly, and using graphite and everything in the handle, the key handle and tumblers, and I've talked enough today. Sorry. Thanks for being here today. I really, really appreciate you all, and I hope you have a great weekend. Don't forget Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, United States Time, we do our club meeting live chat. Sometimes Heather's there with me, and sometimes she's not, but she always pops in anyhow. And we're gonna do some shout outs next week to some really good channels out there to give them a nice bump, because we're all in this together. See you soon.